money. Yeah, yeah. Everything comes with strings attached. I mean, government is a is a quid pro quo pro business. You know, you give me this, I give you that. Right. You know, he's a Chicago politician. He don't give anybody anything for nothing. I mean, look at Bogoyevich, <laughs> the ex-governor, trading right. the seat, you know, for money. Well, That's I just the way they do things. What happened to him? I mean, has he? Has I think he's he? the new Shoney's big boy. Isn't he? Is it, is it, <laughs> <laughs> he kind of kind of makes Wayne Newton <laughs> makes Wayne Newton look windswept. Wayne, Wayne, Wayne. <laughs> now Wayne, Wayne, no, he was actually still out there. I think Bogoyevich was on the Apprentice show. Uh, with, he was on the Apprentice show, I think, with Trump. You know, for a little while. And Trump. Uh, well, yeah. And, he, and what I want to know, what I want to know, I just hadn't anything to do with anything. Where do they find these people? For dancing with the stars, yeah, okay. Yeah. Where, where, where's the net that that they get scooped up with? I guess it's some sort of second tier, washed up deal. I mean, you had uh, they said with Tom Delay, Tom Delay, what was the guy, the, the yeah. congressman? They said when he got sentenced, <laughs> sentenced in Houston for uh, kickbacks, they gave him three years for the kickback and one year for his performance, on, <laughs> <laughs> for his bad performance on Dancing with the Stars. That was his punitive part. So. I mean, it's, I guess there, someone tells them they can dance. As, as I say in this column <laughs> about politicians, about stars and, and celebrities, celebrities feel like they got a, a pine on everything political. Same, same way a drunk feels like they can dance, you know. Right. And somehow people that want to go on these shows somehow think they can do it. So sort of uh, like karaoke. Yeah, it's like karaoke, but. The Paling Girl, I mean, that was a national event. We right, talked about that right. a little bit. I mean, the Paling Girl was supposed to win it and didn't win it, but she got further than people thought she would get. She came in second, didn't win. As we know, anything about Palin and uh, Palin women, when they lose, they go away quietly. <laughs> should never hear from her again, right? <laughs> Ron Hart, when we come back, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about a guy who's absolutely slipped his leash, Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Welcome back. It's the News View. I'm Lee Sullivan, visiting with Ron Hart, syndicated columnist, author, uh, libertarian, and Fox News View contributor. And I want to talk to Mr. Hart about Charlie, who is obviously off the leash. I mean, is there anything left for him to do? That, machine? Yeah. No, he's up to four hookers at a time. Maybe he can go to five or six, set a, set a new personal record. Uh, he's uh, been divorced three times, so if he stays healthy, he can beat the Larry King record. You know, perhaps right. he, he's really? all, yeah, if he can stay healthy for that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, he is getting divorced. <laughs> Finally, you know, he is getting divorced, and he, he said himself, he says, look, I've had it with her shenanigans. I'm out of here. That's what right. he said. Well, now he's, you know, he's, what's funny, I, I love writing about Sheen. I wrote about him this weekend. I'll be in the, in the News Herald Sunday uh, in the paper, but he's one of these characters that, that you know, you can have Mubarak and the democracy movement in, in, in Egypt as complex. You have the $3.7 billion budget deal, that's complex. All Americans understand sex. <laughs> right. and, you know, and, and drug use. And drug use. I mean, everybody understands a train wreck, and we like train wrecks. And he's a living, slow-motion train wreck, but kind of fun. I mean, he's unabashedly so. I mean, what's funny about Charlie is his, he's blurred his character on TV and what his real life is about. I mean, he never graduated from high school. Yeah, he feels like he needs to opine politically on everything, and you know, he's one of these 9/11 truthers, where he believes that Bush was behind 9/11. He signed documents. He's very active in that cause. So, you know, if he had a high school degree, he may have been president. Oh, he's whacked. His brain's fried. It's got to be like that French fry that gets caught under the basket, <laughs> you know. And at the end of the day, it's all little, all little. It's just all Nothing burned gone. up, yeah. you know. He's making, you know, Hollywood's always the moral authority. They're rewarding his, his behavior by $1.25 million a show. He makes $25 million a year for his bad behavior, so I don't know who's going to turn him the other direction. Is that two and a third men or what? Uh, two and a half men. Two and a half and That's men. his show, and also the, the Capri Anderson, his girlfriend, porn stars, also was her movie as well. Wow. <laughs> no, I'm scared. <laughs> wow. Wow. Now the CDC so, in Atlanta has a special CSI division, Charlie Sheen Investigation so, Division. So how do so how do people like Sheen and Lindsay Lohan suck up all this oxygen? Is it just America's desire to see big zeros? I think so. I think I think they like to feel better about their own lives by seeing the uh, disaster other people's lives can be. Celebrities, there's a lot more magazines today, TMZ, a lot more voyeurism, I think, out there. The media now is, you know, well, the National Enquirer has probably been the most aggressive in breaking news stories the last two years between the John Edwards thing, 
and the Rush Limbaugh thing and some other stories they've broken over the years. Well, actually, those, those a, things have almost eclipsed being raped by extraterrestrials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 still gets on the front page on occasion. But yeah, you know, she, but she ain't look. He's he gave us he gave a speech to the UCLA baseball team the other day. He Shane did. He did. He goes. He, his, his answer was, "Don't do crack, and drink a lot of milk." <laughs> so, you know, then he asked for their milk straws, a mirror, and where the cheerleaders were practicing. <laughs> and he left them right there. So somehow he, he gave some motivational speech to the UCLA baseball team. So he's in his own little world. He actually, the, his publicist needs needs to get an award because his publicist is sitting there probably with his spinning wheel. You know, what's my excuse this time? Spins the wheel. Last time he went to the hospital, <laughs> his publicist said it was a hernia problem. And he had three, three hookers back in his place. I said, Charlie, you pay for these girls. You don't have to carry them over the threshold. I mean, <laughs> pretty much a done deal, you know? And he demeaned the porn star's reputation. Yeah, he did. He earned a little bit. And then he woke up in the hospital, and there was three nurses around, and he instinctively got $500 out of his wallet. <laughs> <laughs> thought he was back in this other place. Well, is he? I mean, is he headed towards John Candy and Belushi? And, Probably. And you know, the flamethrower Richard Pryor. Yeah. I mean, yeah, is, is I think that, there's probably a certain I mean, self-loathing. He, he, he can't. He can't maintain that without popping the court. Can he? Right. No, I, I think he's probably. He looks pretty good. I mean, you look at the. I mean, John Cryer on the show has actually aged more than he has. He looks relatively good, but. You know, clearly his insides are a mess. Over and under five years probably with him. I mean, this is not something that's going to end well. Right. He's doing rehab at home. I mean, he's a star. Well, worst worst case in Hollywood. What is the deal with him throwing his cell phone about to uh, uh, Michael Jordan about underwear? What is where? Oh, he lost. I never understood that. Haynes hired him for a commercial. Uh, they've since kicked him off the commercial because he had a bad reputation. They wanted to find someone who had a better reputation, so they did the uh, underwear bomber. <laughs> he decided, so I had him instead. <laughs> he's someone with a little cleaner reputation than an American would find more palatable. <laughs> okay, we'll take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about global warming. Don't you go away. <laughs> Welcome back to Snooze View. I'm visiting with Ron Hart, a libertarian columnist, syndicated of course, <coughs> and author. Uh, and so my last question is, the Midwest looks sort of like Iceland. And where has global warming gone? I, I mean, know. where is Al Gore? He's, he's following masseuses apparently up, up north somewhere. <laughs> he said, Al Gore said when he got in trouble following you know, he won an Oscar, obviously. He got in trouble, actually, I think also in Hollywood with the masseuse kind of grabbing her during the table. He was, he says he wasn't grabbing her. He was, he was showing his animated short. <laughs> but he said he, that's all he was really doing. You know, I grew up in a, one, one town over from Al, a couple towns over from Al Gore in Tennessee. Not a good guy. I mean, he's just the biggest goofball and dope you'd ever seen. No good friends. Everybody, you know, not everybody in his hometown. A lot of people in his hometown didn't like him. He didn't win Carthage, Tennessee, as, as county when he ran for president. He didn't win his home state, otherwise he'd be president of the United States right now. Not a likable guy. So he runs, you know, he runs this little PowerPoint presentation. He's the, you know, the, the, the talk of Hollywood, et cetera. Now all these snowstorms, uh, you know, even in the South. I mean, they, they may run the Daytona 500 with snow tires this year. I mean, so, I mean but, he, but he invented the Internet. Yeah, he's busy, and he's, yeah, he's done well with that. And he's shaking down a lot of, he's made a lot of money since he's left yeah, office. Yeah, he, he got, he's boards. got the uh, <clears throat> global, uh, uh, the uh, carbon footprint. Got the carbon footprint going. Right, yeah. Right. yeah, he's a, you know, look, it, 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 there may be global warming, may not be global warming. You gotta believe two things. A, it's not just a cyclical situation that happens from time to time. I grew up and lived a lot of time in Memphis, Tennessee. The whole Mississippi River was made during the ice age when glaciers melted, came down, formed the, you know, the Gulf of Mexico. In the Mississippi River, it's reason the Delta is flat. There's no mountains there. There's good farmland. So, look, it's, it's temperature changes have happened over over time. It's the height of hubris to think we can affect that. It's Man, being, man's, man man's fault. Yeah, man's, man's fault. It's a guilt issue to correct. And then it's guilt issued. And then, by the way, we're going to do cap and trade where my friends make a lot of money. We're going to, we're going to shake you down or whatever. So it's pretty bad. I mean, they canceled classes uh, all over the country. 440 flights in Newark, New Jersey got canceled. You know it's bad if you think, you know, you'd rather people spend the night in Newark, New Jersey than to travel. <laughs> so really? It's been pretty bad to cancel that many flights. You've got to be able and, to figure out you know, how to get out of there. You've got to get out of that town. 
And it's been a big problem in the South. For example, South Carolina got really mad because they, they wanted to go to school on Martin Luther King's birthday, you know, to make up the days they missed. Well, I missed right. a week or two. So the main thing in South Carolina, they don't want to miss uh, Robert E. Lee's birthday because they, got, <laughs> they got, got to go to school that day. Ron Hart, remember, those are my views. What are yours?